Good morning. This is the service for December 24th, the morning, uh, which is the fourth Sunday in Advent. The evening is actually in the church here, Christmas Day, but we would call it Christmas Eve. So this is going to be an Advent service. We're going to use Divine Service Setting 1, and our opening hymn is A Great and Mighty Wonder. Uh, uh, hymn 383. A great and mighty wonder, a full and holy cure. The virgin bears the infant with virgin honor pure. Proclaim the Savior's birth. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. The Word becomes incarnate, and yet remains on high. And cherubim sing anthems to shepherds from the sky. Proclaim the Savior's birth. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. While thus they sing your monarch, those bright angelic bands. Rejoice, O vales and mountains, and oceans clap your hands. Proclaim the Savior's birth. To God on high be glory, and peace to all the earth. Since all he comes to ransom, by all he be he adored. The infant born in Bethlehem, the Savior and the Lord. Proclaim the Savior's birth. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. All idols then shall perish, and Satan's lying cease. And Christ shall raise his scepter, decreeing endless peace. Proclaim the Savior's birth. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Our service is Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 5. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, Steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. I will establish your offspring forever, 
and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We go to page 152. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We're going to sing our Advent hymn, hymn 354, Arise, O Christian People. Arise, O Christian people, prepare yourselves today. Prepare to greet the Savior who takes your sins away. To us by grace alone the truth and light were given. The promised Lord from heaven to all the world is shown. Prepare the way before him, prepare for him the best. Cast out what would offend him, this great, this so heavenly guest. Make straight, make plain the way. The lowly valleys raising, the heights of pride abasing, his paths all even lay. The humble heart and lowly God raises up on high. Beneath his feet in terror, the haughty soul shall lie. The heart sincere and right, that heeds God's invitation, and makes true preparation, it is the Lord's delight. Prepare my heart, Lord Jesus, turn not from me aside, and help me to receive you this blessed Adventide. From stall and manger low, come now to dwell within me. I'll sing your praises gladly, and forth your glory show. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our first reading for today comes from 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought you up, the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing the Alleluia on page 156. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. 
The hymn of the day is hymn 506, Glory Be to God the Father. Glory be to God the Father, glory be to God the Son, glory be to God the Spirit, great Jehovah, three in one. Glory, glory, while eternal ages run. Glory be to him who loved us, washed us from each spot and stain. Glory be to him who bought us, made the kings with him to reign. Glory, glory to the Lamb that once was slain. Glory be the King of angels, glory to the Church's King. Glory to the King of nations, heaven and earth your praises bring. Glory, glory to the King of glory, sing. Glory, blessing, praise eternal, thus the choir of angels kings. Honor, riches, power, dominion, thus its praise creation brings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the movie My Fair Lady, there's a song, I didn't think he'd do it, but he did it. It seems like a very appropriate song for today, for what is celebrated tonight. You see, God made a great promise, promised to do something that was impossible. He had given a curse, and the curse was that man would die if he ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And man ate of that fruit, and now he was going to surely die. And the promise God made was that he would save man despite that curse. And he would do it without contradicting himself. That didn't seem possible. He promised that it would come about through one of the descendants of Adam and Eve. And then for centuries, for millennia, that curse continued and the promise was given but seemed to be waiting in abeyance as the world waited with abated breath for the day that God would do the impossible, that he would complete his promise. And somehow he could retain the justice of punishing those who had rebelled against him and give the forgiveness that would come about if he made us once again his children if he gave to us the life that we lost when we sinned. Well, on Christmas night, God fulfilled the first part of his promise. It would be fully fulfilled on the cross and with the resurrection. But he did the impossible. The impossible in so many ways. I mean, first, for 7,000 years, he kept alive the lineage that would bring about Jesus. As he went from down the list, from man to woman to man to man, woman, woman, he went down the list through the Old Testament, rescuing people again and again, time after time, taking the smallest of peoples and making them into a nation, taking the smallest of nations and making them important before the world. And constantly, this, this people, this nation, turned their back on him. They were a hard-hearted people, hard-headed as well. 
They would run after foreign gods and foreign nations. They would sin in every imaginable way, taking themselves from being God's chosen holy people and putting themselves outside of his fold, outside of his comfort and his love. And yet, as he chose out various judges and prophets and patriarchs, they were drawn back in, put back in the fold, given life again, rescued from their sins, punished so that they would turn back and return to telling the message of the Messiah and pointing their children ahead to the coming promise of God. And he did it time after time after time after time. Impossibly, he took this obdurate people and he turned them from their obstinate sinning ways so that they would be there on that day, Joseph and Mary, in the town of Bethlehem where David had been born, and the virgin would bear the child, and the impossible would happen. And the incarnate God would be God and man in one flesh. Well, the God who is immortal, who was, who is, who will be, the Yahweh, the I am, he had to die too. Not possible. And yet he did it. He found a way to anger everyone by healing people and giving a message of good news. He found a way to be stuck on the cross by Roman centurions who basically just cared about peace, something that he was proclaiming. And there he was killed, and there he did the impossible and became sin who knew no sin, so that he could be sin for all mankind. He didn't think he'd do it, but he did it. And he did it perfectly, willingly, quietly. He died in our place, and then he did the impossible again, the dead flesh lying in the earth chose to get up, chose to be alive again, glorified. And the symbol of his humiliation, the reality of his humiliation as he was man dying, became the reality of his glory. That his promise from ages before had come true on Good Friday and Easter, the God who became man became man for us so that we're saved. He said he would do it, told it to Adam and Eve, and then he did it. Now he says he's going to do much more. Not just are we forgiven and made children of him, We've got a promised place. I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would tell you. Christ has prepared a place for us. An eternity with him. He gives a promise to David that his lineage will go forever. Well, how could that be? It's impossible. I didn't think he could do that. Yet he will do it. After all, promise after promise after promise he's completed. And it came about just as he said. So when he says that we will rise again, that those in Christ will rise again, our parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, children, it's true. And we can sing his glories. Now in My Fair Lady, they're singing the simple glory of a, of a man allowing a woman to speak in Queen's English. Well, God is allowing us to live in King's life, to be new people. And so in this Romans text here at the end of Romans, Paul says to us, give him glory, proclaim it out, let everyone know, because God has done something extraordinary, something beyond our comprehension something beyond our ability, something we would have sworn was impossible. 
except we know God does the impossible. He allowed Jesus to be a man, to, to die in our place, and to rise again. And so we live a life that proclaims the reality of what God has done, which means we also live a life which proclaims that God will do what he says he's going to do. And as we live out this Christmas season, as we once again look at Jesus and how he has become a man and done the impossible, as we celebrate it in all its permutations, children singing and mangers, Christmas trees and lights, and we give glory in the songs. Glory. So we sing with the angels who sang to the shepherds. We're saying, he did it. He has utterly stunned and amazed me. He has given me awe for my entire life. That God could fulfill what I thought impossible. And what you think is impossible. And so we're pointing others to this fact. Hey, have you seen how great God is? Seen how great Jesus is? Look at what we're doing at Christmas. This is just a model of it. It's not the reality. The reality is far better. Christmas isn't the end. We're going to have Easter and, and we're going to celebrate again. An even greater miracle. And that's not the end of it too. Because he has a promise for you promise we pronounce at baptism and at funerals. Promise that you can be children of God forever. Look, he's already fulfilled this after thousands of years. It's not going to stop. It's not going to change. This promise is great. Isn't that great? Alleluia. And we sing the wonderful songs of glory and people see how wonderful our God is. With Paul, we proclaim the glory of him who has done this extraordinary thing. We preach the gospel. We tell the truth. That we have a God who saved us and who has promised us a future of salvation forever with him. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Glorious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have accomplished far beyond what we can understand. That you have taken what was dead and made it alive. That you have taken us and made us your children. Lord, let us glory in this fact and let our lives be ones which demonstrate the reality that we've changed from sinner to saint. That we live out a love which is extraordinary and that we believe in the love to come. That not only have you done miracles, but you will continue to do miracles as you have promised. The greatest of those miracles is that you will gather us together as your people and make a new world where we can live with you forever. This we pray in the name of our incarnate Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing a hymn of thanks, hymn 352. Let the earth now praise the Lord. Let the earth now praise the Lord, who has truly kept his word, and at last to us did send Christ the sinner's help and friend. 
what the Father's most desired, what the prophet's heart inspired, what they long for many a year, stands fulfilled in glory here. Abram's promise, great reward, Zion's helper, Jacob's Lord, him of twofold race behold, truly came as long foretold. As your coming was in peace, quiet, full of gentleness, let the same mind dwell in me, which is yours eternally. Bruise for me the serpent's head, that set free from doubt and dread, I may cling to you in faith, safely kept through life and death. Then when you will come again, as the glorious King to reign, I with joy will see your face, freely ransomed by your grace. We pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. We sing, O Come, O Come, God be with us. And he did come. So let us sing. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who ordrest all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show. And teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, to, to thy tribes on Sinai's height. In ancient times didst give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. 
O come, thou branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny, that trust thy mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice! Rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. Come quickly, Lord Jesus.